Dear brothers and sisters, fellow redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God, this is it, the climax, the event that changes everything. In the classic story structure, the climax is the height of the action. There's all the action leading up to it and the fallout after, but the climax is what it's all centered on. Today, we come to a climax. It is not just the climax of Holy Week or of Lent. It is the climax of Jesus' life and ministry. It is the climax of all of human history. From the day God gave his first promise to Adam and Eve when they fell into sin, he directed history leading up to this point. As those living after it, we look back to this climactic event to see what it means. And as we do so today, we meditate especially on three words of truth that Jesus spoke from the cross. Words that echo out from this climax into a sin-wrecked world. Words that give eternal hope and comfort to all who hear and believe. It is finished. But what is finished? On the cross, we see Jesus finish everything for the Father's glory and for our salvation. At a crucifixion, the Romans would put a sign on the cross, identifying the one being executed and the crime they had committed. The sign Pilate had posted on the center cross that Friday identified the one hanging there as Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus had, in fact, grown up in Nazareth, the son of Mary and, as everyone naturally assumed, her husband Joseph. But while while Joseph provided for Jesus as a father, in reality, he was his stepfather. Jesus is the Son of God, born in a miraculous way to the Virgin Mary. And as Jesus grew, he faithfully served his Father in heaven. At his baptism, the Father publicly acknowledged the holy life Jesus was living as he spoke from heaven and said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Following his baptism, Jesus continued to follow his Father's will. He faced temptation without sinning. He showed love and compassion to all of those around him. He warned those heading down the way of unbelief that learns that leads to eternal death. And he also proclaimed the good news that the kingdom of God was near. Jesus did all of these things, not for his own sake, but for his Father's glory. Jesus also did all of these things for you. On our own, we cannot follow God's will. On our own, we cannot faithfully serve our Father in heaven. We fall into temptation and sin every day. We fail to show love and compassion to those around us. We condone or maybe even encourage the sinful behavior of others. And we let opportunities to share the good news of the kingdom of God pass us by. Even what attempts we make at doing good and avoiding evil are flawed. All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. But Jesus lived a perfect, holy life as our substitute. Through faith, he gives you the credit of his righteousness. Through faith, he makes our feeble attempts at goodness into perfect acts of love. Faith comes from hearing the message the same message that Jesus himself declared. It is a message of good news 
that reveals to us just who our God is. In his introduction to his gospel, the Apostle John wrote, No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Throughout his life, Jesus did everything for his Father's glory. On the cross, we see him reveal the Father's glory. It is finished. All the Father's work that he gave to his Son to reveal to a world of sinners just who he really is, the God who saves. And on the cross, we also see the power of God doing what we are completely unable to do. While our human mind does not want to acknowledge this thought, that doesn't change the fact that it's true. As we know from Scripture, we are born dead in sin. From the first sin of Adam and Eve, all of creation has been corrupted. We see evidence of it all around us. And yet the greatest display of our sin, the greatest resistance to the will of God, is not confined to the dark alleyways of the world. No, it can be found on your street. It is found in your workplace or school. It is found in both sprawling mansions and cardboard shelters. What great sin is this? It is to look at the cross, to look at the Father's incredible sacrifice, and then to spit in God's face by saying, No thanks, God. I've got this. I'm a good person. I can, I can take care of this on my own. The sinful human mind, with its stubborn pride, is convinced that on our own we can earn our way into heaven. That somehow we can cash in the filthy rags of our man-made righteousness and expect God to accept it. Yet the mind governed by the flesh is death. The sinful mind doesn't understand just how serious sin really is, how much it rightly deserves to be punished by the holy God. There is no quicker path that leads to eternal death, no quicker way that takes you away from the glory of the Father than to choose to stand on your own goodness. Here, on the cross, we see God's way, the better way, the only way that leads to life. As we confess in the Nicene Creed, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. There, on the cross, It is finished. It is finished. The suffering Jesus endured for the sins of the world. The full payment for your guilt and mine. It is finished. God does not, will not punish you for your sins because they have already been punished. And because God himself did it all, it was done fully and perfectly. It is finished. Satan can no longer accuse you, and your sins need not burden your conscience any longer. It is finished. Death is no longer a haunting fear, and hell has no power over you who have put your hope in Christ crucified. We know for certain that it is finished because of Jesus' final words from the cross. John wrote, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Luke records what Jesus said as he did so. 
Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus again calls God his Father. The punishment was over. The sacrifice is accepted. Father and Son are again at peace. For you, Christian, who bears the name of Christ crucified, this means that your punishment is also over and that you and God are once again at peace. Through faith, you are clothed in Jesus' holiness. You are adopted by God into his own family. And because of this cross and these words of truth, when each of us comes to the day when we finish our own earthly journey, we too can gently bow our heads as Jesus did on the cross. We can bow our heads and commit our spirits into our loving Father's hands. Life is not finished then. It is just beginning. For this God of all power and love will take us, call us by name, and bring us into his eternal joy. Amen. Please stand.